Okay, those strikes were some damage control on those step fractures. I managed to get most of the most of those out. Still have a little bit remaining there and up here, but I'm not going to be too worried if there's a little bit left. Now, I spin this around because I'm getting a dent in the tip. I don't like napping with that little dent in there, so I, I turn it to a nice rounded spot. These flakes are, you know, fairly large, uh, and but very, very thin. And uh, I hit the edge. That last flake was here. The edge of that flake took off the step fracture. I don't come directly at it. I take a flake next to it, and hopefully it'll fan out and catch that step fracture on the edge of the flake instead of in the middle. I don't know if I've made that clear before. You can see a little bit of the remnant. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of the remnant of that step fracture there. But you can barely tell. So what I do is, I've already taken flakes on the side of this step fracture, and it's still there, so I'm going to have to come in from the other side when it gets more narrow. I might be able to take that out when it gets more narrow. Starting to get, starting to get thin, so I'm going to work on the base a little bit. It's starting to get too thin up here. You know, I'm going to try to keep it balanced. Less chance of breaking that way. And I'm still working on the edge to to make it nice, and but I'm. I am running some thinning flakes um, a little bit ahead of myself just so I could remove those step fractures. But I'm going back to the uh, making it look lenticular and dressing up the edge. That one, that flake took off a, a, a nice lump that was in there. That was a thinning flake, so I still have some mass, and I just took advantage of the, uh, there was a ridge there. I was going to take some flakes off the base, but you know, I do these kind of, I do, do these things kind of randomly. I might say I'm going to do something and then change my mind. So now I'm trying to get rid of some of this mass here before I thin down the base a little more.
That one's not so good. I caused a step fracture on the edge. That was a good, good thinning flake. A lot of force on that one, so. I gotta dress up the edge, make sure there's no cracks starting. Good amount of force on that one too. And I'm pausing with these flakes because some people are having A lot of trouble with glass with the indirect percussion and uh, I'm gonna take my time to show you these individual flakes just so you can see where I'm coming from because you know if, if I go really fast it saves me time but then you won't be able to see exactly what my strategy is And aluminum is like antler in that it it gets embedded chips. So that's another thing to watch out for. It'll get a hard spot in there if there's a chip in there. And uh, it'll act really funny. It won't be releasing flakes properly. That flick didn't go anywhere. And I don't really create individual platforms. I just kind of brush a large portion of the edge and then look for opportunities. When it starts to get thin, you gotta watch out for these. That's a stiff fracture in there. I can probably pop that out with a, a pick. But I can't be getting too many of those in the middle because it, uh, when, if they start diving in, it weakens it. There it goes. You know, these flakes start to uh, dive into the middle It'll weaken it and it'll look kind of bad and you know it, it won't be very good for hunting. So this thing is getting pretty thin. And it's it's good to get it well, in my opinion, it's good to get it thin in the early stages. Uh so you only have to, you know, work on the edges. Uh, I know in previous videos I've said wait till it gets more narrow to start doing the thinning flakes. But since this is such a good material, I don't have to worry too much about snapping it. I can go thin right away. Or try to. 
it makes it a lot easier to do the finish work if the early stage is thin. It's like abo also. The early stages are the, are very important with uh, natural materials to get it thin in the beginning because uh, the tools are not as uh, forgiving as the modern metals. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to thin a a piece down in the later stages with antler. It's it's easier to do it in the beginning stages. Okay, I'm gonna focus on this now. And that's with percussion. Uh, with pressure at the later stages, it's a, it's a different ball game, especially if you're good at pressure, which I am not. So I depend on a lot on the percussion for my thinness. A lot of you guys can thin points down with pressure pretty easily. I find it difficult. Mainly because I can't do stuff like that. Those last two flakes, I can't really do that with pressure when it's this thin. Creating a little little stuff fractures by accident here, so I'm having to try to repair these or try to get take them out on the subsequent flakes, but it's getting really thin. Got to be very very careful. Be careful that I don't make a mistake at this point because then it's hard to repair. I got to go inside, so I'm going to have to cut this short. <clears throat> I'm going to have to cut this short here and just leave it where it is.
And you can see the banding much clearer now. And it's pretty thin. I'm going to weigh it. Let's see what I got. Two hundred and twelve. So it's getting, you know, I can't take much more off. Two hundred fourteen. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, losing a hundred grains is pretty easy. I haven't lost much off the tip. We should be doing it the other way. It's about an inch and a half. Two and three quarters now, or a little bit over. Two hundred and fourteen grains. Yeah, it's it's going pretty good. Now I have a uh, a little four shaft that I'm going to be using, and if it fits in this four shaft, I'm doing good. Okay, right now it's too thick. This is a uh, grease wood or. Um, Creosote bush, four shaft. In case you're wondering what that looks like, all the hubbub about grease wood four shafts. Anyway, I've made a notch already, and uh, it fits another arrowhead I made earlier that I thought would be good thickness for hunting uh, with a larger point. You know, a hundred and twenty-five grain point is kind of thick. So this is relatively thick compared to my other arrowheads. So if it fits in, I'm doing doing well. And this diameter here, I think, is five sixteenths. I think I said nine thirty seconds in my other video. Uh, that's if you taper it down. It gets down to about nine sixteenths, which is close to a quarter inch. Uh, I don't recommend it on large points to go that narrow. Uh, 5 sixteenths is probably the most narrow uh, that I would go. So you can kind of see, I hope you can see that. It might even be a, a little bit less than 5 sixteenths right at the, the point where it starts to uh, you know, tapered down, but you know, right underneath the arrowhead joint, I think it's five sixteenths, which is pretty common and as an arrow diameter near the tip. Okay, so I don't have very far to go to thin that down, so it'll fit in this shaft. So I'll keep an eye on that, and I'll get it to where it fits first, and then I'll shape it and put notches in it. It's going to kind of look like a St. Charles, because that's what uh, Bryce wanted. I'm going to put notches that come in from the side, and I'm going to put a little dish or a little concavity in the base, and I'll leave the edges big like this, or I should say uh, convex, or some sources call it excurvate or excurvate and not straight but you know rounded like this all right but it's kind of asymmetrical right now I'm gonna when I work on the symmetry and uh, sharpen the edges and put the notches in and all that I'm gonna lose uh, some grain weight and uh, we'll see how it goes it may be a little bit heavy if I think my other spalls can handle it, I might make a bunch of 150 grains. We'll see. All right, that's it for tonight.